Hey, what's going on, man? It's Snail. So I got a little idea. I've been cooking this up for the last couple of months. I'm just going to walk you through it and see if you can conceptually see it with me. Um, but I'm into manufacturing big time. I come from a manufacturing background. I love it. Um, and 3D printers are amazing manufacturing tools, but they're not really set up for that. They're set up to be on a desk. They're set up for whatever. They're set up for a completely different market than manufacturing. However, the same reliability that the consumer market wants translates perfectly into manufacturing and magic happens there. So these machines are capable of running for 10,000 hours, probably these little A1 minis that I'm talking about. They're probably capable of running for 10,000 hours. You keep putting lube, lube on the rails and stuff like that. These little puppies are going to run for a long time and they're going to spit out a lot of money for you. So you figure one of these are going for $250 right now without the AMS. $250 without the AMS. With the AMS, they're 300 or with the AMS, I think, what are they? 350 or 400? 400, I think, with the AMS right now. That is, if you're, if you're in production on anything of value, you're making that money back in a day or two. I mean, that's, that's insane. So these, these are, this is going to change the world as far as manufacturing this little A1 Mini. Mark my words, Mark Snail's words on this. This little A1 Mini will change the world as far as manufacturing is concerned because models are going to keep getting better. They're going to keep getting cleaner, uh, more refined. All that is going to be on a trend up. Okay. And so especially with Maker World and things like that popping up where uh, 3MFs are I mean, it's just, it's just so easy from your phone to print something. Um, that's revol So that's one, one avenue that's revolutionizing this with the A1. <coughs> the second one is form factor. Um, I think they've absolutely nailed it. They've solved it to change. Anything would be nuts. Um, it, you know, and to and an easily, ad easy adaptability for, for manufacturing purposes. So I, let me tell you what I want to do with this thing. All right. So everything is going to be, I'll just give you the whole plan. I want to walk you guys through this and you guys let me know in the comments, seriously, let me know, is this a series you want to see? Because I could, I could just make it and release it, or I can walk you through how I'm building this thing and thinking, thinking through the process. Cause this is going to be probably a couple months in the making of, of doing this, uh, the system. Okay. But I want to, I want to give you some highlights and you guys, you guys just give me feedback, um, what you're thinking. All right. And I, I am a designer though, man. So I take feet. Sometimes I, I'm really harsh with feet with feedback and I'll snap back. I'm like, that's stupid. But then I'll think about it. I'm like, okay, yeah, he's right. <laughs> so I do that all the time. And that's pretty typical with, uh, with designers, but I, I, so I'm not different there, but here, here, check it out. So here's what I want to do. All right. I don't know if I can frame this right. So this is the AMS. All right. This is the automatic material system from bamboo. I'm just, I know a lot of you know this, but I'm just going to go through it for people that don't know it. This is the A1 Mini. Okay. This AMS feeds the A1 Mini. It's four colors. And then you have an extra uh, spool on the back for, but it does, it, anyway, you have an extra spool on the back uh, capable and ready to load up um, for a fifth option. And then you can do cool, interesting swaps with that. So that's, that's pretty sweet. It's a little bit too long, didn't read, but <laughs> all right. But on here, all right, down here, you're gonna see this this leg, this leg. That's gonna be the first piece that I'm gonna work on. This leg that holds the AMS system, I wanna take that off, I wanna make it a straight bar, and then I wanna make it mountable on the wall, okay? And I know that's there's already pieces out there to mount it how it is, but I'm gonna make that more sleek, and the system is all gonna be uh, French cleat, probably. If you ever use the RepRack system, probably something similar to that. It's gonna be a little bit inspired by that, I think. Um, a rep cord, rep rack, whatever this, I got one right here. These little wall systems. And you see that's the French cleat right here. All right, so that French cleat will go on the wall and then the system will attach to it. So there's going to be a piece, it's probably going to use 2020 aluminum extrusion. Um, for automation purposes, uh, you can check out 3DQ. That's what, I, that's what I've been using. I used it on the Prusa Mini. 
Um, I used it a lot and I made a lot of money with 3DQ. Um, so, I mean, it just, it, the parts fall off and it starts the next part. It's, it's amazing. If you haven't seen it, it's probably on the screen right now. If I'm smart enough to edit it later, but 3DQ. All right. They are an awesome company. They're, their whole, their whole system is queuing 3D prints. So the, the, the machine automates the process. It knocks, it uses the, the tool head to knock off the part. It cools down, knocks off the part, starts the next thing, but it's queuing. Like you can say like, I want 50 in gold of this, whatever design. And it will see which machines are available in your farm and start printing and it will queue that whole system and it'll give you an estimated time when it's gonna be done and all that. Anyway, that entire side of the manufacturing part, which is a huge piece, has been solved. And it was solved like a year and a half ago by 3DQ. And they're just, I mean, they're, you know, getting getting the word out there. It takes a long time to get word out there. Um, anyway, great guys from Canada, 3DQ, check them out. You've probably seen a couple of shorts or something on them, but really check them out because it's an incredible system. I think they have nine or 10 developers that are that are building this thing. And I just, anything I can do to collaborate and, and to help them out and to, to, uh, to do whatever I do do with them. I mean, they're, they're amazing and they're gonna shift the market. But with, they've, been, they've had a pilot program um, for automating the A1 minis. I think they're about to release it here if they haven't already. They're about to release it here real shortly. Um, but it's, <laughs> I mean, it's fitting bullets, man. It's amazing what you can do for this thing. You say, I want 50 dragons. And two weeks later, you come back and there's a bucket with 50 dragons. Um, you don't need to change the plate. You don't need to do anything. Um, it's that it's that level of cool. All right. So anyway, but they but any they, that that needs to be mounted at a forty five or not a forty five twenty five degree angle something like that. Maybe somebody from three D Q can correct me. Um, but it needs to be mounted like a, a twenty five degree angle, okay, on the wall. So it's actually going to be, you know, kind of sitting like this. And I want to do a twenty twenty. Um, oh man, I have a hard time framing it like this. A twenty twenty extrusions that go through. All right, right here. And then, you know, some profile pieces on the front and the back and then have it at an angle and use that same French cleat place that, plate that I used or mounting plate that I used for the AMS to mount that. And then also for the spool holders so it can hold 5 kg spools, um, et cetera, down below. And then a, like an adapter piece. All right. That was weird. All right. But an adapter piece that, uh, um, that goes on the wall. So, so imagine the AMS is on the wall right here, okay? So this is up here on the wall, all right? It's pointing this way. All right, now, I wanna also have the ability to have five kg spools down, he down here somewhere on the wall. All right, just imagine this stuff in here, but the wall's here, all right, okay? I wanna have five kg, like four or five kg spools mounted down there on the wall. I wanna have a, a routing system to go up and be able to use this same, these same tubes or the same um, uh, AMS mechanisms to handle that for the bigger spools. So it can be an effectively a 20 kilogram or whatever. I uh, can use 10 kilograms, a 40 kilogram uh, worth of automated system sitting right there. Um, and I, I, it's totally possible. You know, it really, it's been kind of a work in progress with 3DQ and everything for the last couple of years. Um, and they, it, as of about this time last year, they were, it was so good that, I mean, it's seriously a moneymaker and it seriously takes time off of your production. So yeah, you guys think, think about, and that's the big reason why I design guys, um, is I'm thinking about, uh, the manufacturing capability of these things and what you can do with them. I mean, with one 3D printer, you figure if you're making, you know, little knobs or something, you're going to find some stupid niche thing um, that you're printing so many of. But, I mean, you know, look how beautiful that is. It's just a little knob. You're going to find some contract with some company like Honeywell that's going to give you $5 a piece for these. All right? And you're going to make 
and they're gonna say, I want 2,000 of them a month. You think I'm kidding, but that's that's the kind of stuff that's out there, guys. And you want the manufacturing capability where you're not going and changing plates all the time. You wanna go pick up a bucket full of done parts. And that's it. So that's the system I wanna build. I wanna make it really sexy. I want it to be on the wall um, and super easy to use. Um, so join me on this journey. I think I'm gonna call it the uh, MMS, the uh, mini manufacturing system. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be completely tailor-made to work with an already working system, which is 3DQ, but it's gonna be wall-mounted and very, very, I want it to be scalable, because I want somebody, to, I want somebody to be, this is what I want the system to be. Because here's here's where 3D printers are that's so nuts to me. This is already 10 minutes and some long. This is, this is so nuts to me. You are able to take a 3D printer, all right? You're able to buy 100 3D print, A1 minis for $25,000. That's nothing in manufacturing costs. People spend $500,000 on a machine like that. In the big world, like that. And they have a quarter of the capacity you'd have a, with 100 machines at $25,000. You could, in, in an afternoon with two guys, you could set up 100 machines. Okay, afternoon and in a in night. But easy, easily, you could set up 100 machines and put them on the walls if the system is good enough to do it. And and, and that's that's what I think we're, we can build here. Um, I mean, it's already there. I'm just, this is just the, this is just the innovation and the final touches. I mean, mounting systems for the walls and things like that. It's a big part, but I mean, the system is already built. You know, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants here. I mean, snail isn't doing anything. Um, but <laughs> it's, I think, uh, I think, I, I think there is a major, major wave coming here. And this A1, uh, this A1 is going to spur it guys. This A1 Mini especially. Mark my words. So get on this. Subscribe to Snail. For real. Subscribe and give me feedback throughout this thing. And I'll implement, I mean, maybe. What would you say? And I'll try and make it a clean system and uh, take your ideas. All right? So, all right, thanks, guys. I usually make funny videos, but I do like to make serious ones every now and then. And join me on this journey. Subscribe to Snail. I'm out of here. <laughs>